God bless you. you yeah. I, I saw your action today in the first call. That was heartwarming the way, in the way, in the, in the way that you act. I've been watching at least seven hours of your videos today. I feel like I know you on a personal level. So yes. So let's start it. Uh, hey, thank you for the time. What you're doing is amazing. Seriously. Yeah, thank you. Let's, 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 let's uh, start with a little bit about yourself. What do you do? How did you okay. find, how did you initially, you know, find me and how long you've been watching material? And uh, what does financial freedom mean to you in that order? I would say in and out has been for the last one or so. Um, I find you in the middle of the pandemic when everything uh, start. Um, I, 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 what is, I am what is considered ground zero for the United States. I live in New York City. Um, in here, uh, in here was a little bit difficult to say the least. Um, a lot of the business was closed. So um, I was working in a hotel and I also had my business at the time. Um, and when everything got shut down, I was just praying to God every single day and basically saying, how can I find a way to never again put my family in a situation like this? Um, but I was, we couldn't move, I couldn't not get out. Um, and we was basically stuck. So I go, how can I get out of this situation? Uh, and I start just doing all the rhythms that I can dig in. I start reading about Ray Dalio, watching some Grand Cardone, uh, what is the name of the gentleman that wrote uh, Rich and Poor Dad? I forgot. Uh, uh, yes. Um, so, uh, um, and then just basically I went, uh, I started watching a lot of videos. Uh, a lot of things had changed. But then um, and one of those was how I find you. Um, I'm closing the property two days from now, and I saw. The, the velocity system that you use uh, to pay it off uh, because of religion, religion, uh, religion uh, my religion belief uh, is very hard for me to get in, in bed. Uh, I didn't want to ever get in a mortgage. Uh, most of my investment was uh, obviously overseas back home with the mentality that probably one day going back. So the financial basically mean for me, uh, and I think that I heard that in one of your videos, most of the people that leave what I leave, um, they can leave in one minute. Uh, money will not be a problem. So the financial freedom will be not to be stuck to a job or attached to anything. And it's a need to leave, just being able to do that. Got it. So not, not, not having to worry. Uh, so kind of like, you know, just fearless, no doubt, no fear. Basically. Uh, you know, peace, tranquility, that's, yeah. that's financial freedom. Um, let's try and get a little more specific here. Uh, you said you live in New York currently right now, right? Yes, I live in New York. So what would be a dollar amount per month, money coming in, whether you, whether you decided to wake up in the morning and go to work or take six months off from work, what is the amount of money that needs to come in to create fin financial freedom in your life passively? So I'm not minimalistic and I, be, I live a pretty simple life. Um, one of the reasons that I have a little bit of a problem is I'm closing Tuesday. Um, we put like 35% 35, 35 on the property. We're not gonna have a debt of 260 but I can easily live with four grand a month. Now, uh, since all these things started, I, I discovered some stock market investment and I've been doing that and it's been, it's been pretty good so far, but I don't know realistically how that can transfer in the long term. And right. then I saw some of the things that you've been doing with whole life insurance. And when, when the pandemic hit, I just canceled mine. I was on for three years, but I didn't know how to utilize it in the same way that you guys do. 
Got it. Um, so are you currently working right now? I know, I think New York is getting ready to shut down again, if I'm not mistaken. So that, that's one of the things that it, it, it just blow my mind. Uh, my company, we, um, it was like around 10 to 15 people that was working with us. We had an opportunity to call back like seven of them. Uh, today, the mayor just said that we're going to get ready to close down again. And we're talking about providing security service to hotels and stuff. Um, so that is the most difficult part. And one of the reasons why I don't feel like, I don't think that I will be able to open another business again because I have to let them know these people like, listen, we, you guys are going to have to go back to your phone again. Mm -hmm. And that's it when you go like, it's people depending on his family. I, I don't want to go back to that situation ever again. Got it. So that he, you were just talking about your own business. Yes. You, you had to, to close down. Yeah. But you but you personally also have a job as well, working in oh, the hotel. The, the hotel is, is being closed. Uh, so, so both, uh, so that, both of them are closed. Both so of them what are. I have, what I have been generating my um, which is, I think it's a blessing, but I've been generating my money is basically how was that market. I've been doing it for four months, and I basically, so far, have been able to match exactly what I was making in my job. Not bad. That's pretty yeah. good. When you, say, uh, when you say stock market investing, what exactly are you doing? Uh, day trading, Forex, yeah. options, futures? Options. Options, calls. I... I went um, and I find a company. Uh, yeah. Um, and just last call, I, I heard the gentleman say something about how real estate investment and any of those things are not exposed in the Latino market. I think that, that this thing, most people that I know, they can have ninety, one hundred, twenty thousand dollars sitting in the bank, not earning anything. And this, is, the option is called. Uh, I, I never knew about it and I've been doing it for four months and I feel like I don't even have to go back to work. So that operate in different reasons, but it, it's been a blessing and I'm, like, I'm doing what I've been praying for years. And it have, this has to happen in order for me to kind of be able to do it. But the thing that hurt the most is that I had to tell those people, guys, I don't know if I'm going to be able to open again uh, because after the second close, I don't. Not only that I don't want to invest all the time and put it back up, but I not feel like going going back to it again. That's the thing. Got it. So how much were you making pre-COVID, business owner, hotel worker, mm -hmm. and how much are you making today? Over the last four months, you said you've been doing the options trading, and that's been basically uh, keeping you afloat. Yeah. So, um, give me those numbers. Uh, Pre-COVID, um, the hotel was part-time. It was about 40, uh, 40K a, a year. And I was, uh, when my business was late 60, so I can say 107 a year. That's what I, I have made in the last three years. That's you made about 140K, 147K a year, roughly. No, one, 110, 170. 110 okay 150 150 K yeah. gross income got it mm -hmm. uh, what is that net per month what what did that average out to be between 65 to 68 hundred almost seven thousand a month got it and what was your cash flow? With, with that amount of income, 65, 68, almost seven grand a month. Uh, because in the, the thing that I explained to you before, I, I, we really live uh, a very simple life. My class, my cash flow was between 25 to 3,000. Got it. But I didn't do anything with it. I just keep putting it to you the just, side. You just kept stacking it. Right, right, yeah. right. And so now today, uh, mm -hmm. how much would you say you're making safely? Per month, I would say around around six thousand. Okay, 
I don't know how, how much it's going to be the taxes or it because I have to pay it on my own. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be so a little different. Like, yeah. And then so from that 6000 what would you say your cash flow is uh, per month? I, I have not touched a penny since and I started doing it. I, with whatever I was having saved up, I, I just been living from that. Got so you've, been, you've been dipping in, you've been using your savings to. Yeah. Yes. So and, I, and you've been making six grand per month, roughly, over the last four months, just options trading. Yeah. You've basically made what the hotel job. And my company combined almost both of them are making now what well, both of them was, was bringing in, which doesn't make any sense. And I don't know how long it's going to last. But that's right. I mean, I mean you, would you say you're, you're, you're still a rookie? at it right i mean you're you're, you're, exactly. you're yeah exactly um do you have a coach mentor community yes and, and i and i wait to share that with all all the people listening on the side uh, yeah yeah definitely uh, definitely comment uh, i will comment and put it out um that'll they, be, uh, that'll they talk be. About basically the same that you explain about infinity um, they they just do them in, uh, in the stock market. Uh, I don't know if, if it will be fair to share the name, but I can put it on or even email it to you. Okay. But since then, I'm not really convinced of how long this is going to take because anybody seeing the news, you just don't know what is the next thing that they're going to go and shut down. <laughs> right, 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 right. So there's a lot going on for sure. Um, so now let's get into the meat and potatoes here. Uh, what is a specific question or concern, something that you're having trouble with that I can maybe bring some clarity? I saw, I saw in the way that, that, you can, that you explain how to pay down the mortgage real quick. That's the, my biggest concern. Um, I don't know how to utilize the, the banking. Oh, um, I have two credit cards, both of them paid off. American Express, one of them is 40000 and another one is A for my business. Uh, they give me uh, an introduction rate, business straight up for 10 grand. Um, and we have a year, no interns. So I just trying to figure out how can I tackle this loan and not have it there. That's the whole. And, and, and like you said, that's the only debt you have is the mortgage, right? Yes. Uh, so let's get some numbers in here. Uh, how much? Is the mortgage payment per month? Uh, it's gonna be sixteen hundred. And what is the interest rate? It's two point eight seven five. Got it. And how much do you owe? Two sixteen is whatever is left. Two hundred and sixteen or two hundred and sixty? Two hundred and sixty. I'm sorry. Two two hundred and sixty thousand. Got it. Two two six zero. Got it. Okay. Yes. Uh, you said you got two credit cards. What is your uh, credit score? Um, on the day of the close, uh, when they put it up last month, was 802 with three Experian. Uh, and like Equifab and TransUnion was 802. Since they do the full Experian, I say that it's 779. Got it. So high 700s, yeah. low 800s, okay. Uh, who do you currently bank with? Um, I bank with a credit union, and I also bank with. Yeah. Uh, What's the name uh, of that credit union? It's Marriott Credit Union. It's from Marriott Hotels. Wow, they have a credit union. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the privileges of working in the hotel industry. Ah, okay. Got it. So Marriott Credit Union. Yeah. And what was the other bank that you bank with? Um, an ID, a little bit of West Fargo. Uh, no, sorry, TD Bank for the business. TD Bank, got it. I know TD Bank offers personal lines of credit. So your question is, you know, how do we, uh, you know, uh, apply the velocity banking to pay off the mortgage uh, extremely fast? So. Based on what you want, 
your main concern is I want to pay off that mortgage as fast as possible. Correct? Yes. That's what you want. Got it. So based on that, um, because of the, f the uncertainty in your income in the environment right now, um, I don't know if I would be comfortable taking my say cash flow that I have from what is coming in and throwing it on the mortgage. Uh, I would rather either option one, start with debt snowball first. And, and regardless, you have to do this anyways. Uh, you, you have to do debt snowball first anyways, because we don't have a debt tool. Yes, you have credit cards, but we don't have a personal unsecured revolving line of credit or a home equity line of credit yet. So we, we need to understand how those tools work in comparison to credit cards and how we can use both to ultimately get what we want in terms of the mortgage itself. That's an extremely low interest rate, 2.875%. So in regards to a personal line of credit and or credit cards, we want to be extremely careful at, at how we tackle that. But, but here's the good part. That is a brand new mortgage, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. How, how many <laughs> months are you in so far? I'm closing Tuesday. I'm not even oh, right, right. Got it. So you, this is a brand new mortgage, so yeah. I'm not too concerned about interest costs of borrowing on it. I, I already know all that interest is front loaded in the beginning. So, but what I, I do want you to be aware of is once we start doing velocity banking, there's going to come a point where velocity banking will no longer make sense if your debt tool is higher than 2.875%. It just won't make sense. Debt snowball will go just as fast as velocity banking. So we want to be uh, conscious of that. The way to get around that is by simply upgrading our debt tools, going from a P-lock to a HELOC, in the second position and then a HELOC to a first position, ultimately becoming debt leveraged, eventually debt free in that sense. So we want to, we want to keep that on, on, on our minds. It's not a huge concern right now, but later down the road, it will be a concern. What I could be doing today, right now, for sure, if you're taking notes, is just getting educated on what is a personal line of credit? What's a home equity line of credit? How do they work? Get all the information. I have a playlist on my YouTube channel all about the line of credit. You can check that out. Uh, if you join my email list, you subscribe to my community, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you via email over time. You'll, you'll get that if you, if you engage in my manifesto. You'll also see it in there. It's even more in-depth. I do a lot more um, content on explaining that, the material, how we go about applying, getting approved, building a banking relationship, all that good stuff. So that, just put in your notes three to six months, roughly, three, three to six okay. months. In those three to six months, I could either A, take my extra cash flow and make extra payments on the mortgage. I could do that. Am I a fan of that? Eh, not necessarily, but it, that's one way. So I'm going to put that as option one. Option two is uh, a, a unique strategy that a couple other uh, YouTubers will uh, bring up is if you want to pay off your mortgage early and reduce your risk, of a financial meltdown, right? Like losing my income and uncertainty in the marketplace and things like that is whatever you were going to dedicate as an extra payment to your mortgage. We could put that money in a separate account and let it build up, right? 
just let it build up. This way you remain liquid. If an emergency happens, I could pull from it. If not, I keep building it up. And then I get to a point, like let's say I'm doing this for three, four years. I'm just building up this, this separate account to pay off the mortgage, right? In one shot, I could pay off the home in full. So I would be making my monthly minimum payment, right? Monthly minimum payment, blah, blah, blah. And then once that mortgage comes down, this separate account cash comes up, I can make one dump in. Mortgage is done, right? Now, both ways get the job done. The difference is when you make extra payments, you're, you're, you're leaving yourself, say, vulnerable to unexpected attacks, such as losing my income, business shutting down, another COVID environment, another this, another that, market crash, real estate crash, whatever it is, right? So I, I, I run the risk of uh, not having the money I need. But in your case, you, you, know, you mentioned you've built up quite a bit in savings. So... Um, I think you're good there. So now option, option one, straight up simple debt snowball, Dave Ramsey thinking, take your extra money, apply it on that mortgage, knock it down. Option two is kind of like saving your money. You just stack it up over here in a separate account. This is what I'm gonna use to pay off my mortgage because this is what I want to do, right? And I'll just, in this case, I'm just leaving it off to the side in option two, right? This is option two. Leaving the money off to the side while I prepare and then over the next three to six months to implement velocity banking. Get the education, get the proper coaching, whether it's from me or someone else, right? And, and dedicate the time to really learn it, make sure I do it right, right? And so in those three to six months, you're building up your cash, you're making sure your credit's right, you're building a your relationship, you finally get a debt tool or debt weapon, and we start the process. We make a chunk, you'll have this built up cash right here that we can dump right into the line of credit. It'll create some speed. We really probably will only do velocity banking for maybe the first two to three chunks before we get ready to upgrade to a HELOC, right? And then we just have to keep very close attention, which is what I call the, cr the crossover point, which is where your $1,600 a month, 50% of that is going towards principal, and the other 50% is going towards interest. When that occurs, velocity banking starts to not make so much sense. So that's when we revert either back to debt snowball or we simply upgrade the debt tool yet again by simply uh, replacing the entire uh, mortgage with a home equity, line, home equity line of credit. But again, it might not make sense. 2.875%, extremely low rate. It may just make sense to just knock it out with, with straight, pure, principal cash, right? Yes. Um, and, and, and that's simple. It's nothing crazy. That's your goal. I wouldn't let any other Joe Schmo come in and, you know, convince you to do something differently. Like, you know, say for example, Grant Cardone is like, what are you doing paying off your debt? Or Robert Kiyosaki says, why pay off all your debt? It's stupid. You know, you should not pay off. You, sh you should stop paying off your debt because the Federal Reserve is, pr money. is printing money. So why yeah. on earth why on earth would I pay off debt when the Fed, when the feds are printing money? It makes absolutely no sense. What I what I should do is focus on 10x. 10x. Create activity, create cash flow. Debt doesn't mean anything in the 21st century anymore other than debt is now money. I mean, it always has been. It's just now it's more in your face than ever before. So for some people, debt is a burden. Debt is evil, debt is horrible, debt is bad. For some people, debt is gold. Debt is cash flow. 
Debt is leverage. Debt is equity. Debt is an asset. Debt makes you rich. Two different ways. So you, you ultimately need to decide uh, uh, which team am I going to play for um, or, or what's going to make me the most happiest or like I keep saying, what makes wife the most happiest in that sense? What, what keeps the household out of conflict in peace moving forward it's it's all about you personally and how you want to move forward so any questions i know i talked a lot any oh, questions yeah. i've been following along or is this does this bring like nice uh, a, a clear clarity uh, process on how we should move forward it just validate what i was thinking um and I, I i listen to what they say but i go like you see a lot of people for burners and i don't know if i want to be in that position now, a year from now, is I was able to save up, then I can buy something, but I don't want to leverage myself. I just, I've seen so many people struggling where I am right now in the city that it's, it's not fun. And it may be, it may be worth for a lot of people, but in the beginning of the year, I, I own some property over six, and it was people that took three months without paying. So I don't know if I would have some debt, how would that work out? Say that question again. No, I'm saying uh, I don't know moving forward because it's so many people where I am just losing their job. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I, mean, you, I, I get it to to live comfortable and, and, and become really well wealthy, but I don't know what. I'm, I'm just still in two waters. I don't know what philosophy works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some. So I I think in the environment that you're in right now, you know, New York is shutting down. It's just like the whole entire economy has stopped over there. It's horrible. I mean, between California and New York, so many billionaires, millionaires have been moving out of the state. So you got a lot of business moving out of your state. You got a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs saying they're just getting the hell out because they don't like how the, 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 the politics has dealt with the situation from a uh, from a, a business standpoint, a social, uh, whatever you want to call it. So, you know, it, it's a big issue either way you look at it. Keep the doors open, shut them down, whatever it is. Um, what I'm noticing or what I've noticed, some of the greats, the Ray Dalios, Carl Icons, Warren Buffett, I've noticed a lot of these guys are, are being patient they're kind of just waiting you know i've seen a lot of i've seen a lot of sell-offs and i've been seeing that a lot of people just selling off i've seen a lot of people cashing out their 401ks what i'm seeing is a lot of people trying to take control over their money again and not have it out locked up can't touch it so i'm seeing a lot of people bring it back in a lot of people are looking at their faith again. A lot of people are looking at their personal beliefs. They're, it's just all coming family, uh, culture. Uh, that's what I'm seeing. People are, because people are forced to stay home and they got to look at their loved ones and they realize, holy crap, I haven't spoke to you in six months, like had a real conversation. You know what I mean? So sometimes that's more important than maybe making money. Um, and so I, I, I feel like I get that energy from you. You're more of, you know, hey, look, I'm, I'm minimalist. I don't need a lot. What I need is personal relationships. I need connections, you know, love, passion. I, I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing um, and, I, and I'm protecting my kingdom. And if protecting my kingdom means paying off my mortgage, let's do it, right? And so that's how I would uh, keep it there. Any other thoughts or is this just making it more uh no 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 no, no. securing it you, you just validate don't get me wrong i i wish that i own the building where i live but i don't know if i want to go and leverage like uh -huh. i, I want to own a private jet if i could but i just don't know <laughs> if that's the right way to go but thank thank you so much man i appreciate mm -hmm. you and i appreciate you from seriously sincerely yeah i'd love to leave you uh with a gift if you email me Financial Freedom with the Finance Geek in the subject title. Uh, just send me an email that we spoke 
tonight live mm -hmm. so I can navigate all the emails that I get. Uh, just be pretty detailed and just say, then Zell said he was going to give you a gift. So I'd love to okay. leave, you, leave you with a gift um, so that we can continue this conversation. Uh, I want to you know, get updates, see how you're performing later on. And, you know, if things come up, I'll, I'll be doing more situations just like this. Where Thank we, you, uh, Sean. Appreciate it. God bless you, man. God bless you, too. You are really inspiration, man. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Yep. Enjoy the rest of your day.